All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, if I may have your attention, I would like to give you Olivier Courtin. So um, this presentation is about uh, um, text to map. So um, the point is to present um, the kind of uh, issue you are facing if you want to convert from text to map. So um, what is um, the kind of um, um, presentation of uh, what are you facing? Uh, since you are kind of text, the point is uh, to be able to extract uh, the geographical information conveyed by the text, even if it's a non-structured text, so a plain text, uh, and to be able to extract kind of um, information and to convert them into geographical coordinate able to be uh, rendered on a map. So what are, how can we do that right now? First uh, um, operation is the ability uh, to extract part of the text referring to geographical stuff. And the second uh, part of uh, this uh, kind of problem is to be able, once we've done that, once we extract several toponyms, to match them with uh, an already existing gazetteer. Once we pose on this kind of problem like that, we can say that naively that first operation is just a name entity recognition, and there is already tools uh, provide, providing some kind of thing like that, and the, the other one is just a geonames query. So we have the impression that it's quite easy, but, but in fact, uh, the name entity recognition must be um, reliable enough to be able to make the difference between Washington and Washington. So are we talking about the, the famous people or are we talking about a place? And sometimes it's not obvious at all. Um, and on the other part, on the John names one, there is so many Paris. So um, it's not obvious to find the good toponym even if you have a toponym. So um, why NLP, so natural language processing, is hard? Um, first, you know that a comma can save a grammar. <laughs> and that kind of little difference, for you it's obvious, it's common sense. But uh, if it's statistical uh, operated, there is no common sense. So uh, a comma can really kill a grammar for statistical uh, stuff. <laughs> Second is irony. Irony was designed to express the quite opposite that you just said. Because you bet that the one who heard is able to translate. But it really depends to um, which is the other. Um, a machine don't understand irony well. The other kind of stuff is based on the sound, ICQ, and so on. So, in fact, if you are really looking about language, um, you are um, uh, some, um, some people, it's a well-known uh, philosopher uh, who dedicates uh, quite, um, quite his life on um, language stuff, and uh, one of his famous quotes is to say that there is no semantic convey in a single word. There is no absolute semantic convey in an absolute word, um, in, a, in a single word. It really depends on uh, the people involved in the conversation. And in fact, it's the same with something bigger than only a word, but a sentence. If you are looking about the sentence, um, there is no absolute semantic also conveyed by um, a sentence. So um, the classical um, way to handle um, uh, language understanding was historically um, based on uh, ontology. So it's a relation between one and the other and a, a kind of relationship between the other, so a triplet. Um, it's really huge to put in place and to maintain and so um, in fact it can only be um, workable on small um, kind of application because it's quite big to, um, to modelize at large scale. So in fact it doesn't work um, broadly. Um, one of the ways to, to perform that uh, at a point was to say okay we forget the ontology, we forget the semantic and we focus only on statistical posts. So what we already are able to extract from um, unstructured uh, data, 
so text, only by st statistical stuff. And uh, this kind of approach uh, with bag of words, with engrams, and so on, <coughs> are already able to do something. They, they don't uh, deal at all with semantic. They don't know what they are uh, doing, but they don't understand the text, in fact, but they are able to extract stuff from the text. And so it's quite a beginning, and it's quite efficient, even if they have no idea of what they are looking at. So what kind of open source NLP library do we have right now to play with? Um, one uh, comparison uh, provided by Spesai uh, with my um, right now um, uh, favorite ones uh, is uh, to uh, compare different kind of function um, between a different kind of library. Um, and the point we are uh, interested in uh, is the ability to, um, rec to recognize uh, ent entity recognition. It's um, the ability to um, recognize part, part of um, the sentence. Um, and there is also new ones a library because it's a really vivid um, area and there is a new uh, library who came uh, up um, not every week, but it's, it's quite, um, it's quite an old field with a new um, solution um, arising. So if we are looking at SpaceI, um, we can use it for um, several kind of language and with different kind of model. So the point uh, for this kind of uh, library is the ability to train them, it's machine learning stuff, to train them. Um, with uh, some kind of data where there is enough information, um, in fact, labeled. So the point is to, um, to train this kind of um, model with text and label. And so there is no um, an infinity of um, wide uh, text um, available with uh, labeled. Uh, so, uh, in fact, there is no all the language we are uh, taking in account. But only a small, um, small of them. But uh, if you are the l a lucky one, uh, it could be already interesting. And um, for some language, especially for English, there is a different kind of model, small one, medium one, big one, and so on. So it can be interesting to see the kind of difference uh, we can uh, uh, expect from here a large model and here a small model. Um, the first obvious difference is the number of classes you can, um, um, you can have between the two. The ones who are interesting for us uh, are only the one related to location. So here, the location, the orange one, and here, it will be both GPE uh, and also on this one, okay, on this one, it's only GPE. Um, so th this one's and this one. Um, and the, um, the point is that on a larger model, you could have, also you could bet, that uh, um, it will be able to make more differences uh, between um, uh, some um, uh, other um, uh, hard work to, to classify. For example, here, bluegrass, uh, here is identified as an organization. So somehow as people, but here bluegrass, in this context, by a small model, is identified as a location, so as a toponym. So it really depends on, uh, on the model itself. Was it well-trained? Uh, was it uh, uh, trained with enough data, enough good label data, to be then um, uh, able to really classify correctly um, your, your text and to extract what kind of words are supposed to be a toponym, yes or no. Um, if we look to a um, bigger tool uh, able to, um, to do both operations at the same time, so it's Mordecai. Mordecai uh, could uh, use um, 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 a name entity um, recognizer uh, as a space I for the first operation but is also able to provide you at the end a confidence that the toponym you extract is or not related to a country. So um, it gives you a first uh, confidence uh, information that um, is the toponym you extract from SpaceI, uh, is yes or no related to a country, 
because he looked in the name gazetteer and he find that yes or no there is this toponym and if there is many um, of them he will um, give a clue about um, um, the matching uh, relationship based essentially on the population or on the size of the feature so it's a basic way to um, um, to give a first uh, um, confidence rate, but it's really an, a, first, um, a first step to increase it and to avoid the Paris success um, uh, stuff. Um, if we look then to GeoName, GeoName uh, is a well-known gazetteer. Um, in fact, it's a list of millions of toponyms with coordinates and with extra information. So there is kind of metadata related to each um, information uh, stored in GeoNames. The point is that GeoNames is not complete. So there is a lot of information in it, but um, there is still missing names, as there is missing maps. So um, even if there is still, um, even if there is already a lot of information in it, uh, no one pretends that all the information is in GeoNames. So if we look uh, on the whole um, problem and if we look to how we can go further to have something really able to uh, convert text to map, the first, um, the first subject is name entity recognition. Um, first, we can uh, imagine use more rich structured text, for example, as DP, um, DBpedia, uh, who convey some kind of ontology inside. Uh, to be able to extract more information for the labeling and so to train um, a model in a more efficient way. So that's a first, um, first lead. Um, another um, interesting thing will be uh, to find any way uh, to deal better with multilanguage stuff. So anything can be uh, generic enough uh, to work not only on one language but on more. Um, and the other, because it's a really uh, vivid um, um, area right now, um, in fact, some, somehow, um, some years ago, it was computer vision was uh, the hottest stuff in uh, machine learning and deep learning. Now, it became uh, NLP. So right now, it's really something um, um, where there is a lot of um, research in progress. And for instance, this... Um, 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 this link will um, give a list of all uh, the latest papers available only on name entity recognition. On the second subject is Gazetteer. What we can uh, expect to increase uh, uh, the text to map um, uh, conversion? First one uh, could be to find an um, automatic way to complete the Gazetteer. Um, there is some um, project related to um, OCR existing map to extract the toponyms and so to, to have some the beginning of automatic completion. It could be a way or at least to, um, to present some toponym to validate by a human but with uh, an automatic extraction to, uh, to help them to save time. Um, could we use another kind of data, like uh, Wikipedia, Debipedia, anything, to um, complete Gazetteer? The, so the same kind of stuff will already been done for OpenStreetMap. Can we also uh, do that for Gazetteer um, to, to complete um, the journal names? And the third one is uh, the toponym matching. Um, right now, we are only using um, one toponym at a time. So we don't use the context of the text to uh, help the matching. But obviously, in a text, if you are talking about one toponym, and a few sentences later to another toponym, there is a kind of relationship between them. So um, here, there is no... Um, um, it's really a good, um, um, a good way for a further step to um, try the matching, not one toponym at a time, but for a batch, to, uh, to keep all the context of the text to make it. The other, um, as um, um, Mordecai um, 
already use the um, uh, population dimension to help uh, to increase the confidence matching, uh, we can imagine using other dimension. So population is a good one, but we can uh, use other kind of dimension. And for us, the geographical could be also a good one. So the distance between uh, the different, uh, different toponym, and if we use batch, we can have some kind of uh, cross, differences, cross distances between all of them. So there is several ways um, on each step to, um, um, to increase, uh, to improve uh, this kind of conversion. If you want to, um, to play with, uh, there is some human learning stuff. So I provide some, um, uh, some course. This is the best one uh, if you want to, um, uh, to enter in the field. Uh, there is a, a small workshop dedicated uh, only on name entity recognition. Uh, if you want to track what's uh, happening in NLP, it's there. Um, this one is related to um, the context of um, um, deep learning. Um, um, uh, if um, you, you want to, to keep some, um, some information in memory and not to forget um, uh, um, you're, you're learning um, from um, one page to another. And here's some, some books related to, um, to this field. As a takeaway, um, NLP is harder than any other uh, pattern recognition domain, so, um, so it's fun. Um, you have already um, named entity recognition software and model already avail um, available and you can play with. Um, it's really uh, something uh, hot and vivid, so there is new um, progress uh, arising. Um, we can have a first tool to convert text to map, but still a lot to do to have something really reliable um, and to, uh, to, be, um, um, uh, to scale and to be reliable in any case. So um, yes, we, have, we already have uh, stuff, but um, not yet usable uh, in, uh, in something uh, you can really trust, trust on. That's it. Right, we're going to have several minutes for questions. So, uh, <coughs> Thanks uh, for the presentation. <coughs> I think it was a nice summary of the, uh, the field. Uh, quite useful with lots of useful pointers. Um, but uh, what I'm missing in here is that uh, some uh, experimental data, some, some numbers actually to see how well this or the current state of the art uh, perform. Like, uh, because I was initially thinking of, you know, you taking a post from uh, Twitter, for example, you know, uh, or, or a, a, a generic text on the web and applying it using one of the tools to see actually how well, and then you see what are uh, the, the, the problems, where do they get things wrong, where do they get it right? Because, uh, yeah, I, I was just wondering with, to have a feel for um, the, the performance of current tools right now. The two kind of issues are really these ones. So the first is uh, uh, if your name and ticket recognition uh, fail to uh, recognize something as a toponym, so you could miss toponyms, or it's, um, it's, even, um, it's even worse if he believes that something is a toponym and is not, and if this toponym is really on a gazetteer. Yeah, I, I get the yeah. Like okay. how widespread they are. Like if you have like hundred thousands of tweets and you sort of predict this, Um, I will say that it's something like um, um, it will be something like um, sixty-five percent of reliability. So it's better than nothing, and it works in general. But it's not um, something as reliable as computer vision, which is something like uh, eighty or ninety percent. So uh, it's already something, and it's already working. But uh, at a point, you are not that sure that it's, some, that it's really this, this toponym or not. So um, the, um, the stuff we really have to improve is the, um, the reliability and the, um, the consistency. 
Um, and if you want a metric, yeah, something like 65 or 17, 70. Yeah. You could you use? Yeah. Okay. Hi, uh, I'm Daniel Dufour. Uh, I work on First Draft GIS, open source artificial intelligence that makes maps. I was wondering, did you stumble across that? Um, anyway, um, so it does geoparsing. Uh, we're getting about like 80, 85% accuracy, but it really goes to what data set you're using, and there's just a lack of training data. Um, and so I would encourage anyone who wants to look at that. Um, honestly, it's open source, it's just me right now, so please help. <laughs> Uh, but it's github.com slash first draft GIS. Thank you. What, what kind of solution do you use for your... Yeah. So um, it's, it's really interesting. We skipped the name entity recognition part because it was so hard. You just take Thank the whole article, you tokenize it, you look up every word in the database. And so when it's a small article, like the BBC article or something, it performs well because it's just a look up in a Postgres Yeah, uh, a question, Qu quickly. Um, when you are referring to the text to map uh, tools, yeah. uh, you are referring to countries or cities. Is there something uh, mm, um, like map being streets? Um. Are, there are some tools that text to map brings you to the street? In fact, in this design, um, as we are looking on the toponym uh, inside geonames, um, the point is, uh, the question is, um, do we have um, a gazetteer related to what kind of uh, toponym we extract? And if we are, um, are really uh, sub-level, um, we have to be sure that we are really t uh, about which uh, city are we talking about. So if you, if you extract a toponym related to street, uh, you must be sure that uh, this street is related to this city before to doing anything else, because if not, um, you, will, uh, um, you will be in uh, this use case. There is so many uh, streets with the same name in different kind of city. So um, the first point uh, will be in this case to be sure that because of the context, uh, you are um, confident enough uh, about uh, the city we are talking about, and right now, no, there is no solution uh, like that. Reference to this uh, training data set, uh, if we are talking about the Twitter or tweets, uh, so generally the Twitter is also giving you, not for all, for, uh, for some of the tweets, you get the exact position of those tweets as well. So if somebody is talking with reference to that context, for example, uh, Bucharest and they are talking about this uh, location right now for this conference so we could easily use those informations to train our data set and then based upon that we can generate better uh, text to maps as a training data set it would be a very good solution at least as a starting point no but yeah, you, you can verify it. I mean, if somebody is talking about Bucharest and they are sitting in Berlin. What is this? So for training data sets. So using the Twitter uh, tweets and their positions to, to look into the context of those tweets or what, whatever is written there. So for training. for training data sets. Thank you. The point for um, training the um, data set is uh, to increase the ability uh, to recognize a well um, entity uh, inside a sentence. So uh, even if we have metadata um, related to a message, so a tweet for, uh, for instance, um, in fact it's not enough because in fact we are interested in uh, labelization inside uh, the sentence. So uh, it's, it's something interesting, but not really um, 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 meaningful to improve this kind of um, of dataset models. We have time for one more question. Yep. Uh, 
Have you uh, looked at uh, Wikipedia uh, as training data, and what's your experience been there? For now, um, I just mentioned it as a perspective, uh, so um, I think it's a good idea. Um, because there is um, already something like um, um, a massive um, ontology base uh, inside it. So um, we already can uh, use extra information from Wikipedia because there is tags on, on them. But with DBpedia, we also have some ontology. So uh, it's something more than uh, um, plain text, um, and I don't, uh, uh, I don't see um, um, some kind of hybrid approach uh, with both statistical and uh, semantic based on uh, ontology. So I think it's a lead to, uh, to see how we can uh, enrich uh, the kind of information to, uh, to have a better model uh, to, um, to, with a high our label um, output in name entity recognition. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Olivier. Another round of applause, please. Thank you.